all in all, I think you're going to have a good experience with any hardware these days, generally speaking. But mm -hmm. what's neat, Steve, is you, you're familiar with the live CD nature of, of mm -hmm. Ubuntu Linux? Yeah. So what that allows you to do is reboot your computer using the CD, boot up from the CD, and rather than the traditional installer, you know, when you, when you boot from a Windows CD, you get the installer and it can wipe out your hard drive and you can go. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with Linux, if you've got a live CD, which all the desktop uh, CDs of Ubuntu are, unless you download the alternative version, uh, but the standard versions of the uh, boot CD are what's called a live CD. So you've got the option on boot, rather than selecting install, you can actually boot from the CD uh, without making changes to your computer. So with Windows on your hard drive, you can boot from this CD, you can see Linux on your desktop just as it would operate if it were installed on your computer. However, it never actually affects your computer, uh, the running operating system on the hard drive. So then you take out that CD, you reboot, and you're back in Windows, no harm done, and you had a chance to try Linux and see if it worked for you. Um, so with Ubuntu being a free download at Ubuntu.com, uh, U-B-U-N-T-U, -U -U, you're, oh, I should do that. <laughs> Fox, you need then more you're able, to, you're able to try this thing out. So find out if it's working with your hardware. So in Steve's case, with, you know, if, if you've got that old uh, netbook and you want to try it out, you could boot it up and see if your hardware works straight out of the box mm -hmm. without ha ever committing to switching over the operating system. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at the, at, the, at the consumer sector. I'm looking at moms and dads and, you know, grandpa and grandma. And I'm not looking at the, uh, the technology people or the geeks or anything else like that. And, you know, would they, would they actually buy a Linux operating system on a, on a computer? Um, I think not, as long as they have a, a terminal in there where you have to download stuff using Unix as a, uh, as a language. I don't think they want to learn Unix. I don't think there's an alternative to it. But if you if you put out the operating system without the terminal, without using any strange language that people don't understand, I think it could catch on because it's a very attractive system. And with that, I turn it over to Robbie. Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, yep. why are you going in the terminal? <laughs> I, I don't know why anybody who's new to Linux or, you know, that's, as you say, mom and dad uh, or grandma and grandpa are going to be going into the terminal and installing applications using apt-get. It just doesn't make sense to me. It would be like me getting a brand new Windows 7 system and, and going into the command prompt and trying to use uh, the ftp.exe command to, to download applications. It just doesn't make any sense for that user. Uh, terminal's handy for people who know how to use it and who want to learn Bash and who know how to use the system and, and even prefer to use apt-get um, in that instance. But in the instance of mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, I don't understand why they would ever uh, even, even touch that. It's not going to work as long as you have the terminal and you have this, this, this wow. uh, program menu that people <laughs> find very, very foreign. They just can't get used to it. You and I can get used to it, yes. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit can. about the user Most experience. Uh, Chris N. is on Twitter, and he's just saying to me, my mother and stepdad are running Linux, and they have no issues, and they're non-tech people. First point, I don't, I don't really see any of my users um, going into terminal that don't know uh, what to do or why they would use the terminal to install applications when they can use something like Synaptic Package Manager. We don't have to overcomplicate things. Things can be pretty simple. We're not using DOS in Windows to install applications, just like we're not using Terminal in Linux to do anything, really. Most users probably won't ever even touch it. I don't know how that's a relevant point. Uh, but just using a, a real-world example, uh, I had a customer come to me uh, with a, a computer that they had just purchased. It had Windows Vista on it. This was a few months ago, just before Windows 7 was released. And the interesting thing about this particular person is that they were 86 years old, and this was their first ever computer. Uh, he and his wife were there. Uh, in, she was, I think she, she said she was 84, he's 86. And they bought this computer from a superstore, and they were totally overwhelmed with this Windows Vista system. They couldn't get it to do what they wanted to do. All I want to do is get on the Internet and be able to email my son is really what he was looking for. Uh, I want to be able to use it for sending email, basic stuff. He, really basic user, didn't know anything about computers, first computer. I say, okay, well, leave it with me. We're going we're gonna to see what we can do. What I ended up doing 
is inst I installed Ubuntu, latest version of desktop Ubuntu, Ubuntu, not Kubuntu or anything like that. And without the thought ever entering my mind, what happens if they click on terminal and try to install a program with apt-get? That never entered my mind, surprise, surprise. Um, set it up for them, just like you're describing. I took their Firefox, which a user like that has no idea what Firefox is. I put it on their desktop. Using Ubuntu, I stretched that icon so it was nice and big, and I put below it Internet. I took uh, Thunderbird and installed that, and I put it on their desktop. I stretched the icon so it was nice and big on the desktop, and it said Email. I set up their email so that they had, uh, all they had to do was bring it up, and it just connected into their Gmail account and gave them access to it, and a couple of other applications that I installed just to make things easier. I got rid of the taskbar at the bottom, and I installed a Vaunt Window Navigator. Uh, for that Mac OS style dock bar with all that stuff. Removed all the icons from it and threw on, again, really nice icons that they could just click on and it launched the applications that they wanted. But not overcomplicating things by throwing a thousand different icons on, uh, which is what you see on, on like that Vista system that they purchased from the store. Uh, one of their biggest complaints was that every time you turn it on, uh, this was a, a, an HP machine that uh, came with a whole bunch of applications so that when they turned it on, HP branding, HP advertising, all this stuff was coming up. So, so obviously we were able to get rid of that completely because they were running Ubuntu. No more having to have pop-ups for Windows updates. No more having to have uh, virus updates and, and warnings that your 60-day trial of Norton antivirus is going to expire. So then brought these people in and had gone through this entire configuration system, converting their laptop. This is a brand new user, 86 years old, has never used a computer before. Brought them into the office, sat them down, and for two hours we sat and I walked them through how to use their system. It was interesting for me because I'd never, I don't know that I've ever met anyone who was that non-savvy, somebody who's never, ever used a computer on their entire, uh, in their entire life. Thybot saying that I probably put Perfect Ubuntu on it. I absolutely did, out of the box. One of the first things I do is run Perfect Ubuntu on an Ubuntu system. Uh, but the icons were just set up so that it was nice and easy for them. They came in, we sat down for two hours, we installed their printer right in front of them, showed them how it was done, plug it into Ubuntu, it says the printer's working, done, nothing to it. Now this is what I wanted to hear. See, for the last maybe two hours, I've heard a lot of technical talk about Ubuntu, and I've even thrown some stuff up there that didn't really sound good. It didn't sound like people wanted to use Ubuntu. And this is the first positive note that I've gotten in two hours that says how easy it is to use Ubuntu, which is what well, I want to hear. I want see, in two hours we're talking to, to this community. That Ubuntu really works, and it's simple. Yeah. Yeah, but like and, Rob, and like Robbie's terminal, saying. You don't have to use the terminal. You don't have to use Unix. You don't have to know anything. All you have to do is just make it simple for yourself, and that's it. And that's that's the point that we're trying to get across. Right, but Fox, I think what we, I think everybody missed the boat at the beginning, uh, and I think that's what Robbie's trying to point out here is like we're talking to a community here of 99. Well, that that might be stretching it. Let's say 95 percent geeks. People that have computer skills in some way, some form, uh, that understand what even a terminal is, even if they've never run Linux. I know what a terminal is. Um, but but so, I wanted to get that idea across that Ubuntu is very simple to use well, in, if you use the right way. Right. And I haven't heard that. But he makes a good point when he says, too, about, about the terminal, like mom and pop ain't going to pull up in the terminal. Oh, I hope everybody had fun with that. You got to see me uh, in debate mode, uh, defending Linux uh, to a, a very different community from our own. Of course, Category 5 being uh, primarily Linux-driven, it's interesting for, for me to have stepped into uh, a match, basically, with, uh, with a Windows and, and uh, Mac OS uh, community. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed that.